Hi, my name is Lavinia. This is Peter. Welcome to Games Made Easy. Today, thanks to my friend Robert, I want to teach you and give you tips on how to play Rails to the North, the expansion of Great Western Trail. I love this expansion. I think it completes the game and I do not play without it. It makes the game more exciting. It includes new paths to victory without complicating the game, which is my favorite kind of expansion. If you enjoy this video, consider subscribing and clicking the like button. It helps a lot. Like in Great Western Trail, you still play a rancher taking your herd of cows all the way to the big city. You still need to bring the best and more varied herd to Kansas City to make the most money. But this time, instead of only selling your cows to the west, you send them north and reach a lot more cities. The end of the game is still the same. Once enough cows have reached Kansas City, it triggers the end of the game and we count the points. To set up the expansion, stop at phase two of the setup. Then take the extension board and place it on top of the base game like this. Then shuffle the 10 medium town tiles, draw six and place them randomly onto each of these six blue squares, the medium town spaces. Add the six new station master tiles to the base game, shuffle all 11 of them and place them randomly on the boards. Two on the extension board, five on the main board, and finally keep the remaining four to the right of the board near New York City. Place all the exchange tokens near the board and proceed to the setup for each player. Place your new auxiliary add-on board next to your player board. Place your additional disc here and the 15 branchlets three by three like this. Then all players set up their private buildings face up, adding the two new buildings from this expansion. Finally, each player takes one exchange token from the supply. These are great because they allow you to improve your hand. You can play them at any time, even when it's not your turn. You will be able to gain more of these throughout the game as a delivery bonus, as an immediate bonus when playing a branchlet, also with this station. Simply return the token to the supply and pick two cards from your personal draw deck. Then discard as many cards as you drew. I'll continue to explain the new components. Let's have a look at the add-on board and its 15 branchlets. To play the branchlets on the board, you need to take this auxiliary action, discard one value two card from your hand to place one branchlet. Later in the game, you can reveal the second action by paying $2. Once revealed, you can place two branchlets in one turn. Just remember to discard two value two cards from your hand to do so in the same turn. Note that when you clear the second and fifth row of bell space, you collect one exchange token. Also note that your private building 12 works with your add-on board. Here you can perform the place one branchlet action, and here you can upgrade your certificate and gain one dollar for each bell completely revealed. Now I'll show you all the cool things you can do with these little houses on the new board. Take the branchlet from the top of the leftmost occupied bell space on your add-on board. You can place it on any free town square you can connect to with a rail track. That's either connecting to Kansas City, connecting to a city crest you've already put a disc on, but you can only place one branchlet per location, so you cannot place another one here or here. Finally, if you're connecting to another town square where you've already put a branchlet, also, some locations have a cost or a bonus which you pay or collect as soon as you place your branchlet there. Like those where you pay $1 or more, these four where you collect $2, these three to collect one exchange token as we saw earlier, or these two to upgrade your certificate one space down. Then there are four types of towns in this board. You have small towns, you have station towns, you have medium towns, and you have big towns. The small towns are those I've just shown you, including this one where you get to pick one objective and once you've picked your bonus or paid the money, nothing else happens. The station towns work like the stations along the main track. You can place one of your discs and you can decide to upgrade them. You must do that in the same turn you place your branchlet. The disc restriction and placing the worker is exactly like in the base game. And if you upgrade, you collect the station master tile as usual. Then we have the medium towns. 
Those are marked with the new blue square tiles. Like for the station, you must perform this action immediately or forfeit it. The actions are hiring a worker at a $2 discount. Returning two cards from your hand to the box, moving your engine three spaces forward, either gaining $5 or taking one value three card from the cattle market, or placing one of your private buildings on the board for free. In this case, remember that you still need to have enough craftsmen. Finally, we have the big towns. If you place your branchlet on the town square of a big town, nothing happens in this turn, but you can now access this city crest when you deliver your cattle from Kansas City. This affects the subphase five when you've reached Kansas City, the delivery phase. The city crests you can deliver to do not have to be on the track anymore. If you have a branchlet on the town square of a city crest, and if you meet or exceed the city value, you can place one of your discs on it. Here it's eight. Keep in mind the transfer cost as it's still based on the city value. Count the crosses between your engine and where the city would be if it was on the track. So here the red would pay $1 to place a disc on Denver. As in the base game, as soon as you occupy a city crest, you have to resolve the delivery action immediately. There are a few new actions along the track, like here, if you place a second disc on either side of Columbia, St. Louis or Chicago, Detroit, immediately collect one exchange token. You will also lose five points at the end of the game. When you deliver in New York, you can pick one of the remaining station master tiles and place it in front of you for free. Then in Memphis, pick a new objective and collect $2 from the supply. Nothing happens in San Francisco, but you can place more than one disc, which you will score at the end of the game. Nothing happens in Denver. Milwaukee is like Memphis, but you collect three instead of two dollars. Finally, Green Bay, Toronto, Minneapolis and Montreal will score nice points at the end of the game. The end of the game is triggered exactly like in the base game and the points are counted almost the same way. There are a few differences, like if you have one or more discs in San Francisco, then you can score additional points. For all bail spaces completely empty of branchlets, score two points per disc you have in San Francisco. So in this case, two discs and three bells give you 12 points. This one doesn't count as it's not completely empty. There are also some new station master tiles that score new points. This one gives you five points for each pair of exchange tokens still with you. And finally, this one scores two points for each area of the extension where you've placed a branchlet. These are marked with different colors. So in this case, the red player scores four areas or eight points. Add all the other points like in the base game. Now, my tips to win at Rails to the North are there are a lot more locations than you have branchlets and even turns to play them. And once you've played a branchlet, you can't shift it. And if you run out of them, you won't be able to place them in new towns. So stay sharp and focus on what you want to achieve with them. Montreal and Minneapolis alone can give you 25 points and Green Bay and Toronto, nine points. So make sure to buy the right cows to be able to get there. The expansion offers a lot more paths to victory. So take your time charting what you're gonna do. It's not easy. But if you have the right bonuses and you play it right, you can make a lot of points going to San Francisco, but it's not easy. So that's how you play the Great Western Trail expansion. As I said, it's a wonderful expansion with so many new paths to victory without complicating the game. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, consider supporting me on Patreon. The link is right here. We'll make more games easy soon. Bye now.